reformers. It clearly isn't. The hard truth is that virtually none of them has achieved greatness or come even close, and only a tiny few ever will. This is a mystery so commonplace that we scarcely notice it, yet it's critically important to the success or failure of our organizations, the causes we believe in, and our own lives. In some cases we can give plausible explanations, saying that we're less than terrific at hobbies and games because we don't take them all that seriously. But what about our work? We prepare for it through years of education and devote most of our waking hours to it. Most of us would be embarrassed to add up the total hours we've spent on our jobs and then compare that number with the hours we've given to other priorities that we claim are more important, like our families. The figures would show that work is our real priority. Yet, after all those hours and all those years, most people are just okay at what they do. In fact, the reality is more puzzling than that. Extensive research in a wide range of fields shows that many people not only fail to become outstandingly good at what they do, no matter how many years they spend doing it, they frequently don't even get any better than they were when they started. Auditors with years of experience were no better at detecting corporate fraud a fairly important skill for an auditor, than were freshly trained rookies. When it comes to judging personality disorders, which is one of the things we count on clinical psychologists to do, length of clinical experience told nothing about skill. The correlations, concluded some of the leading researchers, are roughly zero. Surgeons were no better at predicting hospital stays after surgery than residents were. In field after field, when it came to centrally important skills, stockbrokers recommending stocks, parole officers predicting recidivism, college admissions officials judging applicants, people with lots of experience were no better at their jobs than those with very little experience. The most recent studies of business managers confirm these results. Researchers from the ASEAD Business School in France and the U.S. Naval Postgraduate School call the phenomenon the experience trap. Their key finding, while companies typically value experienced managers, rigorous study shows that, on average, managers with experience did not produce high-caliber outcomes. Bizarre as this seems, in at least a few fields, it gets one degree odder. Occasionally, people actually get worse with experience. More experienced doctors reliably score lower on tests of medical knowledge than do less experienced doctors. General physicians also become less skilled over time at diagnosing heart sounds and x-rays. Auditors become less skilled at certain types of evaluations. What is especially troubling about these findings is the way they deepen, rather than solve, the mystery of great performance. When asked to explain why a few people are so excellent at what they do, most of us have two answers, and the first one is hard work. People get extremely good at something because they work hard at it. We tell our kids that if they just work hard, they'll be fine. It turns out that this is exactly right. They'll be fine, just like all those other people who work at something for most of their lives and get along perfectly acceptably, but never become particularly good at it. The research confirms that merely putting in the years isn't much help to someone who wants to be a great performer. So our instinctive first answer to the question of exceptional performance does not hold up. Our second answer is the opposite of the first, but that doesn't stop us from believing it fervently. It goes back at least 2,600 years to the time of Homer. Call in the inspired bard Demodocus, God has given the man the gift of song. That's from the Odyssey, one of many references in it and the Iliad to the God-given gifts of various characters. We've changed our views on a lot of important matters since then, how the planets move, where diseases come from, but we have not changed our views on what makes some people extraordinarily good at what they do. We still think what Homer thought, that the awesomely great apparently superhuman performers around us came into this world with a gift for doing exactly what they ended up doing, in the case of Demodocus, composing and singing. We use the same words that the ancient Greeks used, simply translated. We still say, as Homer did, that great performers...